Hello, and welcome back to Ashley Main Makes. So today I am making what turned out to be a very hacked version of the Cashmere Turner dress with my new Juki serger. This serger is a MO735. And the reason I opted to go with a new serger instead of a used serger, where I might suggest that for an actual sewing machine, is that these new sergers are a lot easier to thread than the old ones. I remember working on my Nana's old baby lock and that thing was a pain. So this is quite an upgrade um, and I am still getting used to it. This is my first project on this and it is mostly a test. I have made the cashmere Turner dress before and it's a really simple pattern and I thought this would be a good way for me to practice with this new machine and kind of get used to the flow and the feel of it. So originally this dress is a knit dress, uh, very simple, consists of a like quarter circle skirt and a knit bodice that's lined. Uh, the alterations that I'm making are I'm omitting the lining and putting on a t-shirt band instead. Um, I've also decided to pleat the skirt instead of using the circle skirt, which you'll see later was mostly a fabric decision. And I'll be adding nice big pockets to it that are attached in at the waistband. So the stats on this pattern. So currently the sizing runs from about a 40 inch bust to a 62 inch bust and a 32 inch waist to a 52 inch waist. Now, the reason I say ish is because cashmere runs from a dressmaker's C cup to a dressmaker's H cup and is specifically meant for busty people. So if you aren't that, this probably isn't for you. On the other hand, this makes it really simple for me and I that's why I really love this pattern. Being that it's a simple knit dress, I'm sure there are a lot of other options for this. I just know this one fits me well. And these hacks will pretty much apply to literally any knit dress pattern or t-shirt pattern that you can think of. It's all really very simple and I show you a lot of tricks along the way as long, along with me kind of failing on my serger. All right. So to start off with, we have to take the perfectly cut out pattern from the stink. Yes, yeah, stink. Yeah. You have to get off the pattern that I cut out. So this pattern is actually relatively simple. And the nice thing is I've made it before, but I screwed up my copy so much that I printed out a new copy. So this is the skirt, front and back. It's like, I don't know, quarter circle, half circle. We have just the full sleeve piece. Um, when I go to cut this out, I think I'm actually gonna do it at three quarters, but they only give you one. And I didn't print out more than one and I don't wanna trace it. So I'm just gonna fold back this bottom bit. And we have the back piece and the piece. So for this, we've actually done quite a chunk of grading. Now I have made this before, so I know this works, but um, I've graded all the way from a 28 all the way down to an 18 at the shoulder. Now, I have really narrow shoulders. Sometimes it doesn't work that way and it's not like a true like shoulder adjustment, but um, this seems to work really well for me in cashmere and I don't know why. I've done it several times when I didn't know what I was doing and it works out fine. Um, and then I've graded out for the waist. Now, this is what the grade is supposed to look like, um, but, Last time I had to take the waist in after the fact, but this the fabric that I originally worked with was kind of garbage. Um, it was a super stretchy polyester, and so this time I am doing it in a um, cotton lycra blend. And so 
he might not have as much stretch so I might need the grade so I think I'm gonna do the grade and then if I want to cut it in later I can um, so I actually cut out that size for the skirt waist as well and then obviously I didn't worry about the hips who cares um, I did on the sleeve do the similar grade so from the 28 to the 18 on the sleeve head seems to work I've done it before on all the cashmere wrap patterns and it works fine for me um, I don't know what I got on there some sort of water um, yeah so I did the same on the back piece just the grade down now here's where where did I put the front Here's where it gets a bit weird. So this pattern comes with a v-neck uh, normally and has you line the bodice. Uh, but I don't really want to line the bodice. Uh, I haven't been able to find anything that has a similar stretch to this fabric. It doesn't have a ton of stretch um, and just the weight of it. I haven't been able to find anything similar that would work for a lining. Um, and that's prevented me from using this fabric for a while. So that's not great. So what I'm gonna do is do like a t-shirt collar on it. So I took it from being a V-neck there and the V-neck was a little wide on me too. Which I think just cause my shoulders are so narrow, even though I did at the 18, it was still really wide and shows a bit of my bra strap sometimes if I'm not careful. So. I brought it in a little bit and then it's going to be brought in a little bit more by that like t-shirt collar so this looks low but it'll be another like three quarters of an inch higher than this um so what i did here's a t-shirt piece t-shirt piece neck band so that's like you'll fold it in half so that's the width in half like an inch and a half and then this pattern has a 3 8 seam allowance so that's 6 eighths, 2 thirds whatever um yeah so all i did was i measured with my soft ruler yeah, what this length is around here Basically, like properly all the way and then also this back collar so if you think about it like when you make it it's gonna look like that overlap this your seam allowance and then you measure All the way around can't do this my camera you get the point you measure the curve so that gives you an amount uh, I can't remember what mine was but um, then you do the math so you calculate what 80% is so multiply it point point eight and that gives you your neck band length and then you add your seam allowance back on now this piece obviously like this is half the neckline so this piece is half so you only need to add the three eighths of seam allowance there at the end um yeah so drafted neck band in theory that should work great okay update um <laughs> So I wasn't going to record my cutting montage, but I encountered an issue here. So as you can see, my quarter circle skirt is a little bit big for my fabric, which cool, fine. Normally I would just trim it down a bit. Um, but also we have a print issue going on. So I thought I would talk to you about it. So this whole like, two inches isn't printed. Um, so that doesn't really work. And also if you look at this edge, this white edge compared to that white edge, it's like half. So the middle 
of where this fabric actually is um, is not the middle. The middle is off center. And obviously there's a clear like center. So originally I wanted it to be lined up. So one of these rows would be right down the middle. But I don't really have enough to make it as full as I might like. Now, if I was to put this back, like where it, is, where it was, for Pete's sake. Now, I was to put this back and I was to cut it to where it would fit, it would have to come down like that, which would give me like basically an A-line. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that. Like I kind of wanted a full sushi skirt on this. I'm wondering if I just basically cut it to the edge. Um, on both sides and then just gather it down. That would be basically like the maximum fullness that I could have. In an ideal world, I think I'd want to pleat it, but I don't think that's going to work either just with this pattern. So I want something that you can't tell that it would be off center. So I don't know if I could make it in such a way that it would work to where it didn't look off center. Maybe if there was exactly what ever this difference is. I don't know. It might just get gathered down. I mean that would solve my pocket problem because I could just gather it up um, with the pockets in it and do that. So I don't know, slightly frustrating. I thought I was good to go and I'm sadly not. So we'll have to figure that out. Let you know what we do. All right, so I wasn't gonna show you a cutting montage, but I thought this little piece would be helpful. So this is the back pattern piece and I just cut it out basically like this where this piece was. So I cut it out like this, basically to the center of where the pattern was. And then once it was cut, I folded it this way. And then I'm trying to match up the pattern here. As you can see, I've mostly got it down here at this point. So that um, when I cut it, the pattern will be straight down the middle. So you won't have any wonky pattern because this pattern is so large that you would notice if it wasn't going down the middle. So this works really well for like stripes and plaids, anything really like that, matching up sleeves. Maybe I'll show that later. And witness the wild stink sitting on and crunching on the pattern pieces when they're on the floor and on the fabric. Yes. Yep. Extra wrinkle it. That's it. Good job. Solid. Think. It's like she walked over here because she instinctually knows that I'm about to cut right there. Yes. Yes. So helpful when I have things on the floor. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the lighting is garbage and I'm going to do my best here. Also, Kashmirat has this on their Instagram and would explain it far better than I would. But basically, I have the sleeve here and I cut the first one out like this, right side up. And so then I'm laying it basically this side down, which is really important. Otherwise, we'll cut out two left sleeves and then laid it out and then matched up again the pattern so that both my sleeves are the same. Um, also make sure you mark it so that you put your front and back in the right holes so your arms won't be on backwards, backwards. Anyway, continuing onward. 
All right, so initial first pass here through the serger and it looks pretty good, but you can see those tiny loops sticking off. And from my understanding, that means that these couple looper threads, the tension needs to be tighter because this fabric is quite thin. Um, so learning as we go, it's good to have test scrap. This is why you do these things. All right, so I ran it through again and it's even more messed up. Not ideal. And uh, looking at this, <laughs> that's that's not good. Well, and I think I've got it now. Looks about as good as we're gonna get. So I'm gonna roll on to actually starting the project. Yay! Starting with the shoulder seams. Okay. So I sewed up the shoulder seams here, and then of course we come to the trickiest part first. And so I have the neckline pinned around. I did like stretch it to fit. So there's bubbles in between each one. Just sitting here kind of chickening out, I guess, a little bit. Um, psyching myself up to try and go around the whole thing with the serger. Um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to start on something that has no end like this on a serger. I think I'm just gonna do it kind of at the back here. If I wobble a bit, then it'll be not the end of the world, but we're gonna give it a go. Um, I have to kind of stretch it as I do it. And we will see how this goes. So it's on, such as it is. Um, I think one thing with the serger is there's no going back if you do it one shot like this. Like I didn't quite get this even here. It thins a little bit there. I don't know if you'll be able to tell when it's worn, but it's not perfect. Um, I've got a couple puckers up here where I was trying to round the corners. Again, I think when I wear it, it won't be an issue, but you know, just not perfect. I think next time I would probably just zigzag it on with a machine just to ensure I'm happy with it before going to the serger. So I'm not trying to deal with pins, you know, trying to have pins stuck under the blade and keep an eye on that, keeping the tension. This is all a lot with one hand. Um, then I just kind of sewed on and then sewed off. So you end up with almost like a little bit of a triangle back here. I don't know if you're, that's how you're supposed to handle that. I'm really not sure. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I tried looking it up and no luck, but I think, I mean, it's good enough. It's on. There's that. I mean, this is my first serger tester project, so I have to cut myself some slack for it not being perfect. So actually I'm doing the sleeve next. So we're just getting through all the hard shit right off the bat. So here I've got it all pinned. You can kind of see where that conca concave meets the convex there over the shoulder. Um, yeah, at least the good part about this is that you've got sort of like straight and then gathered and then straight again. So hopefully this will be easier to run through the machine. And we're gonna give it a go. Anyway, see how smooth we can get. So I got it pretty good until I hit about here and I had a bit of a wobble and you can see where I wobbled it and then it actually like looped off. So I might try and run, I don't know, should I? I might try and run this again through just this one little section just to see if I can get it even. But just like anything else, like this actually takes quite a bit of practice. Um, it is kind of a different feel than a sewing machine. It's a lot faster. Um, I was trying to creep around, but I actually almost think that did me a disservice. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just practice, right? Like first project, it's practice. That's what this is. So I figured out how I'm going to solve my skirt problem. So what I've done is I've actually cut this panel 
to be symmetrical. So I looked at this side and this salvage line comes just to kind of where this loop ends. So I cut this other side also where the loop ends. And so that gives me a symmetrical piece of fabric to work with. So that way I can actually just pleat this to the bodice and it's actually gonna look okay, which is great. Okay, so I thought I should go into more detail of how I am going about pleating this. Um, I know there's like conflicting thoughts and a lot of people do a lot more math than this. Um, this one happens to turn out really easily. So, cause this is curved, I'm just kind of walking soft tape measure along here. No, walking a soft tape measure along here. So mine is about 14 inches, give or take to the center. And this works out really easily that I am, ah, there we are about 24 and three quarters over here. So probably what I'm gonna do is, this is me making it really simple. You could be really exact about this, but I think for me, I'm gonna want the middle um, section slightly wider, just cause I think that's a nicer look on me and then pleat out from there, out to the side. So, for me, probably what I'm gonna do is, just to make it easy, leave this middle bit, um, something like add that three quarters to the middle bit and then do add, reduce my 10 inches out of the rest of it and make it easy. Okay, so I thought I should go into more detail of how I am going about pleating this. Um, I know there's like conflicting thoughts and a lot of people do a lot more math than this. Um, uh, this one happens to turn out really easily. So, cause this is curved, I'm just kind of walking soft tape measure along here. No, walking a soft tape measure along here. So mine is about 14 inches, give or take to the center. And this works out really easily that I am, ah, there we are. About 24 and three quarters over here. So probably what I'm gonna do is this is me making it really simple. You could be really exact about this, but I think for me, I'm gonna want the middle um, section slightly wider, just cause I think that's a nicer look on me and then pleat out from there, out to the side. So for me, probably what I'm gonna do is just to make it easy, leave this middle bit um, something like add that three quarters to the middle bit and then do add, reduce my 10 inches out of the rest of it and make it easy. Okay, so I thought I should go into more detail of how I am going about pleating this. Um, I know there's like conflicting thoughts and a lot of people do a lot more math than this. Um, this one happens to turn out really easily. So, cause this is curved, I'm just kind of walking soft tape measure along here. No, walking a soft tape measure along here. So mine is about 14 inches, give or take to the center. And this works out really easily that I am, ah, there we are, 
about 24 and three quarters over here. So probably what I'm going to do is this is me making it really simple. You could be really exact about this, but I think for me, I'm going to want the middle um, section slightly wider just because I think that's a nicer look on me and then pleat out from there out to the side. So for me, probably what I'm going to do is just to make it easy, leave this middle bit um something like add that three quarters to the middle bit and then do add reduce my 10 inches out of the rest of it and make it easy all right so here is one half pleated obviously i played around with several different options here of what these pleats are gonna look like um i ended up on roughly one inch pleats and then this works out so i'm coming to exactly 14 there like i wanted to so that's great um and i've lined this up the main thing is the side here for me um so the side what is that yeah, so it's like two and a half. So that works out pretty much perfectly because obviously we're going to lose three eighths along the edge here for the seam allowance. And then, like I say, this middle section ends up being wider, but I kind of like that look anyways. So that works out pretty much perfect. And this is what it looks like on the other side. Now for this, I wasn't worried about the pattern at all. I kind of, it is what it is based on how much fabric I have and the width of this fabric. So, I mean, not great. In an ideal universe, yes, I would probably pleat it kind of more with the pattern, but this pattern is so large that that doesn't really work. Also, I kind of wanted to have larger pleats because of that. And just generally because I'm a larger human, I think the larger pleats are a little bit more flattering than having like a whole bunch of tight pleats unless I'm gonna have a lot of them so yeah this is kind of what we're working with so now that I have that sorted I'm gonna measure and replicate it on the other side as well as the back now you will want to re-measure the back because the back is probably going to be a different measurement than the front especially if you are busty like I am so I'm going to look at those pleats when I get there, and then I'm probably going to base these on my machine just to keep them in place. So away we go. So I evened it up on that side with that large salvage to give myself enough room to do a nice big pocket. Um, the only issue with that being is it was one long strip on one side with the large salvage. So what that's going to end up being is... Um, this is going to be like the side seam of the dress and that means this side is going to be upside down. I don't think this is going to be a huge issue because I'm doing inseam pockets and so you'll only really see in the poke of the green poking out. You're not really going to see the whole pattern. I think it's more important that it's green than that's in the right direction versus the white that you might see poking out. So say this is like the back of the dress here and then right side to right side. So this would be the front part of the dress. And so this piece would be right side up and this piece would be upside down. Um, so yeah. All right. So it's the next day and I have my pockets attached to my skirt panel here and the side so I'm ready to go I had to google actually how to turn a corner um because I had made these square pockets and I wasn't sure how to execute that you know things you don't think about with a new tool but um yeah, so I thought I'd just show you some action of kind of how this is, and we're going to try turning a corner, 
And the other thing I'm wondering about is like, normally I would run like a stitch up here just to keep part of the pocket closed and the bottom of the pocket so stuff doesn't fall out instead of making that like curving shape. Um, I don't think I can do that with the serger. I'll probably have to just still take my sewing machine and run a stitch up here. But I don't know. So next time I might do rounded pockets. I do like the square pockets though for your phone because then my phone doesn't fall out. So meh, meh. So let's give this a go here. Now I know that you don't technically have to lift the foot, but I've been sort of liking it with this fabric that's thinner to do it this way, just so it actually has a hold on it. Um, like before I take the pin out. Hard to say though um, how you're supposed to do this, but I think. So, one of the things that's weird about using a serger is this foot is much longer than, say, your sewing machine that's only about, you know, like that. And it's got these two needles, so one of the things is you have to, like, keep it straight um, all the way under this entire width versus the shorter width. So it's something to think about when you're doing it. Um, I think for being a practice, it would have been nicer to work on a thicker fabric that it didn't wobble so much. And I think the next couple projects I'll do on this... I'll probably use it on some wovens to finish some edges just to get a bit more practice with it. Where it doesn't flop around so much. Like that. So what they said to do to turn the corner was to slowly crank it. off the edge and are we off I think we're off and then you're supposed to actually keep the needles up versus a sewing machine you would keep them down like to pivot so that's new and different um, and then they said to like loosen this a bit so that it can make the corner. I don't know if that's too much. That seems like a lot. And then to pull it around and then to put the foot back down. kind of see so I was a little off like I was a little too um, wide there coming off the corner although my corner sort of wobbled again being this sort of thinner fabric it just sort of like also my corner wasn't cut like 100% straight and looks like it sort of stretched out a bit so eh, not the prettiest it's a thing it's sewn I feel like that's where we're at on this project. Like, this is all a learning experience, and I'm taking you guys with me, and it's not gonna be perfect. So, I've said a thousand times in this video. Okay. Ooh. That's the other thing, too. I'm getting used to the speed of this thing. Um, it goes pretty fast, just lightly pressing on it. Versus I feel like my sewing machine and I are pretty in tune at this point. 
So what they said to do for an inner corner was to take it and fold it straight like an ice cream cone to make the inner corner. Now my issue with that being is I've got several layers going on here because it's the two skirt panels. And, and the other thing is like you have that distance. So what I was finding when I was putting on the arms, the sleeves, is that this is like a wider distance so you want to make sure that you're not bunching and not catching that this creates little gathers. All right, so we'll do it your way. Let's go. Take it slow. Okay, straighten it up here. Hope for the best. Can't really see it. Still doesn't come out the other side of the giant foot. I mean, yeah, yeah, sort of, kind of, you can see it there. Mm, home stretch here, actually straight. I did the hardest part first going around those arms those that was pretty brutal actually and I was um, doing it on the wrong seam allowance because I'm so used to doing wovens I was doing it at 5 8 so I was cutting off a whole chunk so hopefully hopefully the sleeves aren't too tight um, I mean one thing it's a knit so that the sizing is pretty forgiving but I'm learning 3 8 is basically like flush with this so and I might even be going a little shy of that but rather that than it be too small because apparently I was making it too small and I did the same thing on the collar unfortunately so I can't fix that wobble pretty yeah and see the other thing is too like you can see where this is not cut totally even um, which I'll fix when I go to hem it but you can see where the stitches are fine and then when it hits the single layer the tension is off so the tension is set up perfectly for this size and thickness of fabric so if you switch then you have to mess around with the settings um, in order to get it to be straight again. I know there's a cutter. I'm just so used to my nippers. So yeah, that's like not the worst. Uh, it's not the greatest. I don't know if I like love that as a thing. That doesn't look very nice. Um, and it didn't catch like forward how you would like like I mean I'm gonna stitch this down after I don't know I might do a rounded I might have to do a pocket pattern that's rounded for the next one um, versus my usual straight pocket if I'm gonna use the serger again all right so where I'm at is I have the skirt assembled here I did go ahead and stitch up to the mark on these pockets with my sewing machine and then I have it pinned to the top of the skirt so that it catches in the seam and again doesn't flap around so it'll be nice and then I have my fully assembled top here and I have it right side out so um I'm going to pin it at the waist on the inside and then yeah so you want to make sure you have it right side out and then this goes inside and then you pin it around the edge um, so that when you flip it out it's right side out. Um, 
yeah, so I'm gonna go and sew around the waist and then I just have the hemming to do and then we're gonna be done. So here we are again, hemming. I'm just using my favorite little um, clover pressing thing, pressing guide. Um, I think this is actually used for quilting, but I use it a lot, um, especially for straight hems. So I'm just going to iron this. I actually already ironed it flat with a little bit of starch just because this um, knit is rolling on me and behaving badly. Just generally, this was not a good choice for this project. Um, so I'm just going to iron this all the way around and then I'm actually just going to stitch it up with my sewing machine. Um, Technically, my serger has the ability to do a cover stitch, and I could reconfigure the whole thing to do a cover stitch, but at this point, I think I just need more practice. So I'm just going to hem this and be done and be happy, and um, then I will show you the final reveals. Ah, uh, this is just so soothing after fighting with the serger all afternoon. It's just like, look at that. So easy. You know, it's good to push yourself. It's good to try things, you know. It's good to try and learn new skills. Sometimes it's just nice to have a palate cleanser. Yay. Overall, I think this project was a pretty successful happy accident. The shoulder seams that I ended up sewing too far in with an accidental seam allowance brought up the dress quite a bit to be more of an empire waist. And the waist itself, because I didn't check it, is actually a little too big. So that sort of created the effect of a baby doll dress. Also, I think the pleated works really well with this style and I think I would have been unhappy with a circle skirt with a large waist like this. So I think this ended up being, luckily, a cute dress and it served its purpose of allowing me to work on my new serger. This fabric was really inexpensive. I think all in it cost me about $12. So any flaws are not a huge deal. And if it doesn't last me forever, that's okay. This is just about me learning a new skill and getting some practice in. So what do you think about all my hacks? Do you have any serger tips for me? You probably do. Would you like me to make any more cashmere patterns? Um, I have a lot of them. I really love them. So do let me know because you're probably going to see more anyway. And overall, please leave a comment down below, subscribe, tell me what you liked about this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!